During this section, we are going to be making a grep light program using Rust, and we're primarily going to be using this to build a way of handling errors when things get a bit tricky. But the first thing we're going to need to do is basically get a program working that does the very minimal functionality of grep. So we'll start with a new program. We'll call it pgrep for packed grep. And let's open up our main file. Now we're going to need to use clat to get the file's location. And we're going to need to use regex to actually sort that. So that is a crate in cargo. So that is a crate here in cargo, regex. And this basically is going to do parsing bit of the file. And from in here, we will add regex version 1.1.0, and we'll add clap 2.32. Then in our main file, we'll need to use the standard clap thing. So that was use clap, clap app, and create version. And from regex, we will use regex. Obviously, we're going to want to use these, and I'm going to do that in a function called process file. Now, this is because I've already written this code and I know that we needed to break it out into a separate function. So, and for this, we're going to need a path and we're going to need a regex. And what should we return? Well, I'm thinking we will return a result. And this result will either have a vec of yes is, I guess, a vec of locations. So we'll make that location. And for that, we'll want a line number. And we'll use a use size because that is what enumerate returns and it's easier than changing things. And we'll want the text. And here we'll just use a string for now. And this will be a vec of record. And the other item, for now, we will put a string, which is not what we really want to do, but we will fix that later. So that's an error of string. And instead of taking a path directly, it's probably sensible, and it will certainly make our lives easier elsewhere if we take path. So this should now be P. And we're going to need to use standard path. So let's create our result. Let mute res equal a new vec, and we'll return OK res at the end. Now that function really doesn't do enough. So let's start with the file and open the file. Let bts equal standard fs, and we're going to read as byte the file, and that is p. Now this returns a result, obviously, because it's going to be doing something with the file system. That file might not exist. There are many things that could be wrong with that. We're going to want to hit question mark on that, but we can't hit question mark directly. Dot map error. And for now, we're just going to ignore the error and put could not read string. Now, that is not the ideal error handling, but it will get us our byte as an actual set of bytes, or it will have returned a string that can fail. Next thing we need to do is to convert that to UTF-8. Now, the reason I have done it this way, we read the bytes of the file and then we try and convert them, is we get our errors separately. We could try and do read to string, but I didn't want to return an error if the file contained was a byte file. I just wanted to return, this is just a byte file, ignore it. So at least for now, let's just allow byte files to run and not be considered errors. Often you're going to have a bunch of text files mixed with binary files and you just don't want it to search the text, the binary files. So we'll just only read the ones that can be. So now we're going to convert the bytes that have been written to a strings. Because we don't want to treat a non-string binary file as an error, we're just going to go through this as OK if we've got anything. So we'll just do if let, that's OK SS, and that is string from UTF-8, and that's bytes. And that's brilliant. And that's a consuming function, which means we know that it can be done quite efficiently, and it will probably return the exact same array just having checked over that 
file. So now we've got our string. We're going to iterate through the lines of that file for l in ss.lines.enumerate. So obviously we need to break this one apart. We'll have an i and an l. And in here we need to check for matches. So if re.isMatch on our line, then we're going to res.push and we'll add a new record. Line will be i and tx will be l dot to string. And we'll let Rust Fump do its thing and make it all tidy. Finally, in our main, we are going to need to actually get the oh, let's get rid of that. And then if we go to main, we're going to need to use a clap app. So let let's cp equal clap app p grep. And for p grep, we're going to need a version. And we use create version. And we're going to need at least one argument. And we'll call that file for now. And this will be a dash f and a dash dash f file. And we will take a value. And this is the file to test. And this is an arg. So now we have this. Let's run a process on the file. So let p equal process file. And the file we're going to process is, oh, we're going to have an option here, aren't we? So this, let's make this function return a result. And that's of empty type or a string. That way we have the same usual control. And from here, we'll go get cp dot value of and it's file and we'll put dot okay or and this is because it returns an option so this is the easiest way of getting a string out of an option okay or chosen and that will question mark and once we've got that we'll just print line on p Obviously, before that's going to work, we need to make sure that this can implement debug. Return an OK. Make sure that this can handle debug detail. This function takes two parameters. We haven't got a regex. Let's take a required pattern. <laughs> I'm trying to do the very minimum possible just to get something working, but actually, there is quite a lot needed just to get something working before we can even start on the other stuff. So let's pull in a pattern and we'll make this one required. And so in order to get the pattern, the second argument was that pattern. So we'll do cp dot value of and that's pattern. And again, OK. This should unwrap. It's required. Oh yeah, and then we need to pass it. Let R E equal reg X new and then we'll take this and that doesn't seem to fail. Let's take R E there. My Okay, so that puts everything together. Our main program just grabs the arguments. We take a pattern and a file, and then we apply the pattern to the lines of the file, and then we just print out all of the results. So let's try and run this. I'll go run. Now to pass the arguments through, we will need a pattern. So let's choose hello, and we'll need a file to test this on. So let's make that file so much just to get started. So we'll have a bunch of lines here. So there are three lines in that file with the keyword hello. So now we can cargo run and then the pattern will be hello and the file will be test data t1. 
And here we go. We have line one was hello world. That's line. Remember, they start from zero. Line three was hello people of the world. And line five was let's all say hello. So that has successfully done the very minimum amount of things that rip grep can do or grep. But we can do better and we can definitely improve our error handling.